Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to, we are about to begin our third bout of the evening. Jonathan Kaufman is taking on Jonas Rubiano. Let's have a look at our tale of the tape. We've got Jonas Rubiano. He's 29 years of age, 5 feet 9 inches tall, weighing in at 140 pounds with an amateur record of two wins and one loss. He will be fighting Jonathan Kaufman, 23 years of age, 5 feet 5 inches tall, weighing in at 140 pounds with an even record of three wins and three losses. Is this better? All right, we're ready, we're ready for the blue corner at this time. Jonas Rubiano, Jonas Rubiano. <laughs> Jonas Rubiano preparing to walk to the cage for our third bout of the evening. Rubiano in the blue corner. His last fight was a unanimous decision loss to Vladimir Kazbikov in March of this year. Previous to that, Rubiano won his first two fights with finishes. So that means he has only been to one unanimous decision, and that was his last fight at uh, Gladiators of the Cage in March. Rubiano looks like he has a lot of crowd support here. Big following, lots of friends and family. Absolutely. Team Flip Mode believes that is a reference to his Filipino origins, judging by the flag on the shirt. I was trying to figure out what flag that was. I wasn't sure, but now, now I am. Wow, a lot of support here for Rubiano. That's exciting to see. Coming out of stout training and Team Henzo Gracie Pittsburgh, a very highly touted school here in the Pittsburgh area. Mike Wilkins applying Vaseline to his face here. Who is Mike Wilkins? Mike Wilkins is a very talented up-and-coming 155 pro uh, from Henzo Gracie. Absolutely. A lot of people are looking to see Wilkins make his way to the bigs here in the hopefully the future. But for now, he's spending a lot of time training these amateur fighters to be the best in the area out of stout training. Very, very highly touted school. Jonathan Kaufman getting ready to take his way to the cage. Kaufman out of underground grappling uh, local school here in, in the Pittsburgh area. What's interesting about Kaufman is he actually has twice as many fights as Jonas Rubiano. Now, he does have an even record of three and three, uh, which, you know, he's, he's experienced more losses than Rubiano, but he does have a tremendous amount more cage experience. And this is uh, going to be contested under the uh, tier two rules, as uh, neither man has uh, shin pads on, so no shin pads, and this will have punches to the head on the ground. Absolutely, a very big change in the in the rules here whenever you go to tier two for amateur MMA. Jonathan Kaufman's last fight was a knee bar victory versus Osahan Ono Osagi in July of 2014, and that was a pinnacle fighting championships. Impressive victory and an impressive name for his opponent. Absolutely. You know, anybody that can pull off a knee bar in a cage fight has my respect. That's not an easy move to really perform, uh, especially whenever you're actually wearing the gloves and, and all that stuff. Now, I have to point out, maybe he was wearing shin guards. Actually, with shin guards on, uh, knee bar actually becomes a little bit easier. It's one of the few things that probably helps. And interesting of note about Jonathan Kaufman, every win he's had has been via submission, and every loss he's had has been a decision. Walking out with former Gladiators of the Cage commentator, Charlie Smith there. Kaufman confident, entering the cage. Let's send it over to our ring announcer, Dan Bogan, for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our amateur main event of the evening. It is in the Gladiators of the Cage amateur bantam weight division. I'm being contested under advanced amateur rules, which means three three-minute rounds. First, fighting out of the blue corner, he weighed in at 135 pounds. He stands five feet, nine inches tall, 29 years of age with a two and one record. He fights out of stout training Pittsburgh and Henzo Gracie Pittsburgh. He's from Pittsburgh. Welcome, Jonas Flipman Rubiano. Rubiano. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in at 135 pounds. He stands five feet, five inches tall. He has a 67 inch reach, 23 years of age, with a record of three and three. He fights for underground grappling. He's from Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Welcome, Jonathan Kaufman! 
your referee, Jim Snyder. Here it is, folks, our amateur main event of the evening. Jonathan Kaufman and Jonas Rubiano. Kaufman coming out looking very light on his feet. Kaufman looking, he's putting the pressure on Rubiano and going for the takedown early. Well, this kind of weight, both guys are always fast. Absolutely. A little bit close to kneeing the head of uh, Rubiano was Kaufman. Now that's something to be, to be noticing, although both of the fighters are in advanced amateur rules where they can kick without the shin pads uh, and they can punch in the ground, they're still not allowed to kick or knee to the head. Good takedown by Kaufman. I don't know if he's going to be able to keep him there. You know, Rubiano working. Uh, looks like he has a Kimura grip on the arm, but the arm is straight, and he uh, I think he lost it here. He was kind of on the wrong side of the half guard there for that, uh, that specific submission, it would seem. Kaufman in the guard of Rubiano. Now, I know Jonathan Kaufman's very comfortable on the ground. As I said, all three of his wins have been via submission in the cage. Here's Rubiano's trying to posture his hips for uh, an arm bar, possibly. Rubiano's doing uh, the right thing. He's trying to get his guard up. The higher you get your heart guard towards the head, the more offensive you can be. If I were uh, Kaufman right now, I would be really focusing on keeping that head tucked and, and getting ready to yank that arm out if he goes for that arm bar, because he's doing a great job of turning his hips he is, perpendicular to Kaufman's spine. He is getting off at the, the angle he needs to to attempt a submission here. Important note, the advanced amateur rules have three three-minute rounds. These fighters have a little bit more time to uh, work on executing a good game plan here. Very good exchange by both fighters. Kaufman pulling guard. Now Kaufman's turn to work from the bottom. You know, when I talked to Kaufman's coach, Charlie Smith, before the fight this evening, this is not a bad thing for Kaufman. He was very well prepared to get himself on the bottom and work his jiu-jitsu. A grappling heavy school. Is, he is uh, uh, already going for the leg lock. Excellent transition. Wow. He's got, he's got he the angle. He can do a straight leg lock. He, this is legal. He cannot twist it, but he is allowed to do a straight and ankle lock. He is on the ankle. He just needs to stretch him out a little bit more. Wow. Kaufman's cranking that Achilles lock. He could break the uh, the leg here, Rubiano, if he uh, if he doesn't be careful. So the problem with the lock right now is it is a little bit too high on the on wow. on his elbow. It's slipping down on his now. forearm. And he needs to get his wrist right on the Achilles tendon. Mm. Not exactly sure what happened there. Chip Snyder standing the fighters up. Maybe he thought that the, the ankle lock was turning into a bit of a Possibly. twisting move. <laughs> Round one in the books. Very very impressed by the performances here by both fighters tonight. The ankle lock attempt by Kaufman, that was really something else, huh? Uh, I think for me, that's uh, why I would give him the ground. That yeah, is, um... Well, he sat in the guard of Rubiano, and Rubiano was trying to become active, trying to attempt submissions, and, and he just could not do it versus Kaufman. And I think that, that would also be another determining factor in the fact that Kaufman controlled the ground here in the first round. Yeah, and most of the fight was on the ground, so uh, he controlled the first round. Absolutely. Not entirely sure what the stand-up there was for. You can only guess that it had something to do with the leg lock um, beginning to twist, and you are not allowed to do twisting leg submissions at the amateur level. I, I, I tend to agree, but from my angle, it looked looked like an attempt at a straight Achilles lock, but you never know. And, and every decision made by the referee here tonight is for the fighter's safety. Getting ready for round two, Chip Snyder, our referee this evening, cleaning a little bit of, uh, appears to be water off of the corner of Jonathan Kaufman. Here we go, round two is beginning. Both fighters looking fairly fresh. Kind of an awkward striking stance there by Rubiano. Oh, Kaufman and lost Kaufman's his mouthpiece. mouthpiece. Flies out there. But, I can uh, tell you from experience that is not good. And he does not Rubio, want to lose a tooth. 
Rubio's under the neck, but no, no. Coffin's on top, He's, he doesn't have that. Uh, I would hope that Chip Snyder would pause this for a moment and give the mouthpiece back to uh, Jonathan Coffin. I'm not sure if... I, I had my mouthpiece knocked out in a cage fight in 2012, oh. and I'm still dealing with dental issues to this day from losing a tooth. Rubio's on the neck here. Um, wow. He's, he's got those long, thin arms that can really get a bite it in this kind of position. He, is this what you would call a prayer choke, possibly, or a, possibly a prayer a, guillotine? Or a, a variation on a Bravo. I'm so glad that Chip Snyder stopped that. I did not want to see anybody lose a tooth here tonight. That's something else. That's... You know, as an amateur fighter, you're not getting paid for these fights. Maybe you're getting a little bit from sponsorship, but there's nothing here that's going to cover you getting your teeth replaced, believe me. And they're going to restart uh, I love in that. position. Very wise on the part of Chip Snyder, starting them back in the same position. Chip is a grappling master himself. He knows exactly what position they were in, and he's very good at resetting them in a fair way. Rubiano just teeing off right off the jump and a good sweep by Kaufman. Kaufman, I'm not exactly sure who's got the upper hand right now. Kaufman's got that single leg, but he's getting his, his body passed by Rubiano. Wow, and Kaufman trapped Rubiano's right leg with his left shin, and that is a determining factor on if he can get he his did. position tight. And that might be the, the move that allows him to uh, basically finish this takedown and get position. Absolutely. Pinching the, the knees together is Kaufman. Very, very patient and methodical in this takedown. I love that. He needs to worry about the guillotine, number number one, I would say, he if does. I'm a Kaufman. He needs to get his head out of there. He, he's hiding his head in a good way. The fact that he's got his head tucked under the arm of Rubiano is keeping him from absorbing too much punishment from the punches, but he is at risk of getting guillotined, especially by a Henzo Gracie Jiu-Jitsu uh, trained fighter. And, and he, he is, is out. Now, he is now attempting his own guillotine, possibly. Wow. Good defense on the part of Rubiano, straightening out the arm of Kaufman. Nice knee exchange by both men. Kaufman again to that single leg. I feel like that's a very comfortable position for him. Almost to the end of the second round. I expect to see them stall out here for the last few minutes, possibly Kaufman posturing up and throwing a couple of hits, getting some damage done. Now that round, um, hmm. I uh, I would probably go with Rubino here. Um, he had the better submission attempt uh, with with the choke, and even though he was on the bottom, he he, he landed more shots. I would have to agree. I mean, Kaufman's uh, is playing a dangerous game here right now because he's unafraid of being on his back. He's unafraid of being in the guard. And if that works for him, good. But I mean, whenever it comes to the eyes of the judges, they may view that in different ways. Kaufman just spent most of his time on top in that round, kind of securing position. Uh, but a lot of times he was, he was getting punched. He was getting hit. Absolutely, I agree. Not very active. Uh, from the top was Kaufman. That's something I think would have garnered him a little bit more points in the eyes of the judges. Maybe if he could have gotten off a few more shots. I think so. If he had just landed a little bit more, I, I would have given him that round. Round three coming down. Let's go Jonathan Kaufman in the red corner, taking on Jonas Rubiano in the blue. That would signify the tape on their gloves. Good kick by Kaufman, and Rubiano is just tracking him down with these punches. Kaufman with that single leg. Nice single leg there. He did not like what he was getting on his feet, so I uh, went to the single leg. 
Now this is something different, okay? The only time that we've seen Kaufman on top in this position in so far has been with Rubiano's back up against the fence. And that tends to stifle a lot of the submission attempts and a lot of the movement that he could be performing. Now that we have him in the middle of the cage, he's got a lot more open room, open mat space to try and work on some jiu-jitsu. He does. I would not be surprised if he goes for another straight ankle lock here in this third round. Stand up by Chip Man, Snyder. I would have to give that one back up. I would give that takedown to Kaufman. Obviously. Um, that was a beautiful front kick there by Kaufman as well. I think Rubino wants to find his range and, and work some work some boxing, but uh, I don't think Kaufman wants any part of that. You know, if we're talking about who's controlling the fight, who's controlling the pace, who's controlling where the fight's happening, I have to give it to Kaufman right now. Every time he's gotten close enough to Rubiano, he's put him down onto his butt. Another takedown here for Kaufman, but... A lot of rabbit punches by Rubiano. Now, those might not be hurting Kaufman, but they are racking up points in the eyes of the judges. I mean, on the one hand, Kaufman has gotten a takedown, but Kaufman also hasn't landed a single shot this round. Well, he's gotten two takedowns this round. I mean, he's doing a great job of controlling the posture of Rubiano. Rubiano being, like I said, a stout training and Henzo Gracie jiu-jitsu fighter. I mean, he's, he's really not having an easy time getting back up and defending the takedown. And now Rub Rubino's in a very advantageous position here. Um, really teeing off on Kaufman right now, but Kaufman is maintaining a top position, it appears. That's a Kaufman's, 6 six to 12 elbow there on the ribs. Kaufman's ribs are uh, turning a, a nice shade of red here from, from the pounding he's been getting. You know, he's a tough kid, though. You can't say anything about that. I mean, he knows what he's trying to do here in this fight. Here's where Rubiano's going to start that teeing was, off. Those are some nice shots by Rubino. Single leg attempt, and Rubino's show. Rubiano, you got me messed up on that name. He is just... Rubino. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rubino family. I've been saying his name wrong the whole time. Wow! We might have been saying his name wrong, but uh, he's doing something yeah, right. We will not forget it after this. Kaufman fighting his heart out. My God! What that, a fight! What a fight! Two excellent, warriors. Excellent finish that round by Rubino. Um, No, I can't say enough about that fight. That would have fight of the night contention, in my opinion. Uh, both fighters just taking it to each other for all three rounds. You know, Mike, let's take a look at the instant replay. Here we see the last 25 seconds of that third round. Ruby, Ruby Rubino, Rubino, Rubino is just teeing off on Kaufman. And he, his, Kaufman has not once faltered in grabbing that single leg. No, he, uh, he is really good at getting that single. Absolutely. Now, there's different viewpoints on takedowns in MMA. I've always personally thought that uh, if you can get a single leg, why not get a double leg? With a double leg, you are always able to pass into a, a different and more advantageous position. You don't find yourself in that single leg uh, paradox that a lot of these guys will end up in with their head tucked and holding on to one leg for, for dear life, you know? It's just easier to get on a single. Man, look at... Kaufman absorbing the punishment. Rubiano really dishing it out. That was very close, I think, to Chip Snyder stopping that fight until he grabbed that leg there in the last five seconds. It, it looked very close. Let's send it over to our ring announcer, Dan Bogan, for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. All three judges have scored it 29-28 for your winner. Fighting out of the blue corner, Jonas Lipman! Was he as tough, not as tough, or exactly as tough as you thought? Uh, he was a lot tougher, man. He uh, had a size on him, but dude is strong. Great sportsman. Thank you, John.
Who do you want to thank to get you here? It's a, when the door cages, you're in here alone, but it takes a lot of people to get all the fighters into this spot. Who do you want to thank? Yeah, real fast. Uh, honor and conquer the clothing brand. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you. Um, uh, everyone down on all my training partners at Stout Chain Pittsburgh. Hensel Gracie Pittsburgh, what up? Team Babyweight, what up? Flip Mode, what up? Uh, all my instructors, and uh, I got married last year. What up, Jamie? Let's hear it for Jonas Flipmode Rubiano! Well, there you have it, folks. I was right the whole time. His name is Jonas Rubiano, and we will not forget that name after the performance we just saw here tonight. Now, in preparation for our professional bouts of the evening, we are going to go over to a 15-minute intermission. We will see you soon, folks. I'm going to set up a special one.